What's up, YouTube? This is the Needed Podcast, episode 87, Deep Dive. And why is it a deep dive? Because we are deep diving into the new additions to the gameplay. Going to take up most of this most of this podcast. Talking about the new additions, man. So let's get to the shit. We will be talking about CFMs, too. Because CFM, there was an outrage today. There was the CFM guys... The CFM panties are burning. Shout out to Patriots fans with the tier one. The CFM panties are in a absolute uh, nightmare bundle fire. Uh, not the CFM dudes are are really hot. Um, but I appreciate my man Kells with the gifted Patriots with the tier one. My man Lou was in the chat with the tier one. Cody out there with the Twitch Prime for ten months. Thank you guys. Um, but. It was a big week because when was the the Clint the Clint stream? Was it like Thursday or I don't, I don't remember when it was, but it was good. Honestly, as my man, there he is. T Trill 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 two T twenty three. My man, I appreciate the tier one. Thank you. I but the pot it was good. The um the stream was good. I think we all are super amped about it. I think we're super happy. I think we're super excited. Is the word, my man, Thunderball. No, we're not going to double perk. We're on a podcast now. We're talking about gameplay. Um, if you guys want to watch this podcast live, every single Tuesday, we do this podcast. And you guys are a big part of the podcast. Is a way we can talk about Madden, talk about uh, the gameplay, talk about the MCS, talk about everything. Um, I, I do like Clint. I, I trust Clint. I believe Clint is a, a guy that you know wants to do everything the right way. Um when we all talk about Madden, we all have our opinions, and at the end of the day, we have to realize that they all have bosses. All these guys, Kralo, Clint, like, Clint is not the boss of Madden. He's he's not even close to the boss of Madden. So, one thing, when he talks and he has to make decisions, uh, most of the time he's doing that. As my man Post comes through with the five gifted, put some demons in the chat up. Oh, we're going crazy right now. I appreciate it. But, so those are essentially where we're, what we have to realize is that all these things are made essentially by the the higher ups of EA man and it's a business as my man Bugbot throws another five Bugbot out of nowhere I said if you guys want to watch this live man Twitch is the place to be that's where it's at um it's really popping all my streams have been really live especially these podcasts are really cooking up with steam we are 13 weeks away from the 100th episode we're going to do something special for that man uh I, and and a lot of this a lot of this goes back to my podcast I had with, with Rex. And Rex is somebody I'm feeling like I need to have back on the show. Because when we had Rex on the show, it was probably one of my first 20 podcasts. Um, Things weren't as popping as they were, as they are now. I think, uh, and I think having Rex again would be really tough. I can't get anybody from EA. Um, they won't join the show. But Rex, um, he taught us a lot. I mean, he opened my eyes to a lot of things in that when EA makes these makes a new game, like, bro, it's their goal. They want more people. You know, they want more consumers. They want to open up their product to more people. As much as, as much as us, or this is what I'm saying, uh, as much as we, um, we, no, I don't want to go sub only today because I feel like there's a lot of CFM dudes that aren't subs and might want to talk about CFM, and I'm here for that. We are here for that. I want to hear it. Uh, so I definitely I, I definitely want to keep unless it gets crazy. So, yeah, there's plenty of mods in here that can, can the weirdos got to go. But, like I said, we got to realize that EA, Madden is their product, and they want more eyes. Kind of like me with streaming or you got whatever you got. You want to, how do we get more people watching? How do we get more people playing? What is the, our angle to get more people to play? That's a lot. When we talked with Rex, was kind of about that long shot. I believe that's what it was called. Long shot was this thing they put in the game, and they tried to get more people to watch that or more people to uh, to, to play because of that. I want to play a story mode. I want to play uh, like something that I can engage my story mode fan in the football and essentially turn that into a mutt player, essentially. I love CFM, and we'll talk about CFM in depth because I feel like I feel like the CFM guys are just I I don't know I, I think we all got to realize I guess we play Madden for different reasons and we do do that and and but back to the gameplay I'm saying like when EA makes a Madden one we have to realize and and I think the few Madden will always have to come out every year I don't know if you guys agree with me on that I think the biggest 
obstacle that man has is that it has to come out every year. Every August, every J July, there has to be a new Madden. Now, I ask you guys, how often do other games come out? Call of Duty is split amongst two different companies that make Call of Duty. You know, so how, how often does Treyarch make a new Call of Duty? Or Infinity Ward, do they make a new... I mean, I, it's just... It's rare for a game to come out once a year on a cycle, on a schedule like this. Nowadays, with how big games are and how involved the different games are. Uh, for instance, The Last of Us was, I believe, came out last week. And uh, we think about how long it took between The Last of Us, the first one, and The Last of Us, the new one. It was a long time. And these games are very involved. And uh, uh, to, so you got to take that for what it is, is that EA puts out a new Madden every single year on... Uh, on clockwork, you know, they really did every single year. So that's an obstacle that they have. You know, we only have you and you got to think about this too. So they're going to put out Madden in August or, or the end of August, right? Boom. So they dropped the new product, probably another two or three months into that product. They're working on fixing the game that's out now, you know, but then they have to turn around and start making a new game, you know, so their time is real. They're really hampered by time as far as making a game is. So I, at the end of the day, I don't want to, it's like they can only do so much, you know? And I think it's hard to say that because it's like, the easy thing to say is, well, hire more people, right? Well, I mean, you're EA, you got to make billions of dollars, right? Hire more people, hire more. But you know what I'm saying? And that's like, that's the easy thing to say. But at, at the end of the day, say they have 50,000 people working on Madden, you know, 40,000 probably work on gameplay or 30,000 on gameplay. It's just, they are hampered with the time that they have. So, uh, but like I said, the gameplay stream was awesome. I felt like we all enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, it got me super excited for Madden. There were some things that, that we all heard that were super exciting. Like we're all in on it. Um, and, and I'll go over right now. I mean, this is a pretty, what's going on with my, my mouse right now? Oh, we're stuck. Okay. This is a pretty in-depth breakdown. It really is a pretty in-depth thing. Uh, as far as this gameplay deep dive is what they called it. The Madden 21 gameplay deep dive. All right. Now this is, this is what it was. And this pretty much, um, as we sit here, boom, welcome back to gridiron notes. All right, boys, let me see. Let me make sure I have my, my my boys up here so I can hear what you guys got to say. And my man Luke with the sub. Thank you. I appreciate you. Make sure I got, I got, I got to get the feedback from you guys, right? We'll see. And, and All right, let's about run defense. Now, the run was super OP last year. I Honestly, I, wanna, I don't want to be the one to say the run wasn't OP because it was. Uh, I think tackling is a bigger deal than these run defensive things for me personally. Simply put, stopping the running game in Man 20 was too difficult for most, myself included. I don't know about you guys. Too difficult for me. For Man 21, we aim for a more balanced run-pass ratio, so we've made some improvements to our run fits and defensive gap system. With the strong emphasis on the force defender, who is the defender responsible for setting the edge versus the run. Here are for some specific improvements we've made towards that goal. So the force defender, I'm assuming like an outside linebacker in 3-4, something like that. Um, force defenders align the line of scrimmage at the snap. We use wider angles at the start of play to, to show more anticipation and better pursuit predict, protect, prediction to set the edge versus outside running plays. I guess stretches, tosses, uh, man, somebody like Clowney or LT will be a dog. Uh, have not heard back from the higher crowd yet. That's a good question by my man, Argus. We shall see. Um, so all, I mean, honestly, all this sounds good. And I don't think we've ever come into a man where I said it doesn't sound good. Force defenders will show more anticipation in their pursuit angles at the start of the play. Uh, that's a good thing with pursuit angles, per anticipation for pursuit angles. I think pursuit is such a tough thing to, uh, such a tough thing to make a computer do. That's what like pursuit has. I don't think pursuit has ever been good in Madden. You know, I, I think it's such a tough thing because as I think about whether it's my user or whether you're chasing somebody in real life, it's like you kind of, it's a mental thing of, of picking the angle that you want to run at to catch that person. Isn't it such like a decision you have to make when you're running as far as pursuit is like, like, okay, I can't meet this guy right here. Let me change my angle and go this way and that way. 
I, I've always thought, I don't really know how video games work, but I always thought that's a tough thing to, sim, to get a computer to simulate. Like, how can I make, shout out my man Old Tech with the five bomb, the demons are out. I appreciate you, man. I, I feel like, I feel like, hear me out on this. I feel like pursuit is intelligence. Pursuit is thinking a step ahead. Pursuit is the human mind. You know, and how can you artificially make defenders make those decisions? Okay, I'm not going to make this tackle. Let me be safer. Let me take, let me just, you know, give him more space so I can cut off the angle. Like, I think it's such a mental thing, um, pursuit and how to tackle somebody in the open field uh, that it, it's tough to emulate in a computer. Niner, I, and I, I kind of feel that way. I, I, I don't want to say that, Niner, but I kind of agree with you. I, not, not that I don't want to say I don't agree with you, but it's like uh, I felt there was so much user dependent on the ta on the pursuit in Madden, and that should, I feel like it kind of should be there. Um, edge and force defenders, hammer and fill players who are the defenders in the run fit responsible for the open gaps inside of the force players. Will take wider initial pursuit angles and outside running plays. Honestly, all this sounds good. I just want to see how the run, how this works. You know, I, I really want to see how it works. My man Old Tech is going crazy right now. So, so for me, as pursuit is tough. Tackling improvements. Now, this is this is for me personally where I thought Madden was bad, where Madden twenty was absolutely terrible, uh, and you guys see it in the clips I post where where. Where running backs run right by people and they don't put an arm out, they don't dive at the ankles, they don't attempt to hit, they don't attempt anything. Like defenders really don't have arms and they don't have eyes, and it, and that's for me was the biggest was the biggest weakness of Madden 20 was simply the tackling. I, I felt if if every player had some type of ta tackle, you know, tackle not tackle supreme but secure tackler so they could reach and and wrap and suction tackles and things like that, the game would be a lot better. Um, in addition to the upgrades to our run fit system, we know how important tackling is the run defense. We just, we didn't just add the new breakdown and pylon tackles. We also made some core improvements to existing tackling systems to make tackling more accessible and a stronger point of counter in the run game. Now I'm interested in this breakdown thing. Cause that's something, honestly, I kind when I played football, not that I was not, I'm not Dick Butkus. I never was. Uh, but even when we would play flag football or we would play touch or tackle in the foot, like, I was good at, like, breaking down. Like, and sometimes, like, if you break down, like, you'll get ran over, right? Because you have no more momentum, pretty much, in this run, but you won't completely whiff on the tackle. You know, you kind of almost slow down and kind of, like, use their momentum to tackle them. And they might run by, they might truck you, they might fall forward, but you stay in front of yourself, man. Uh, and, and I think that's a big... My man Blitz with the Twitch Prime and AS3 with the Tier 1. Uh, defenders will now be much more aware when they are engaged in blocks near a ball carrier. And they will trigger tackle attempts from engaged inside the trenches. I feel like that's kind of like reach a leap. Um, one thing, Blitz, I appreciate it. One thing I do... Yeah, Trent, I, I agree. But sometimes I do see, as he says, sometimes people get tackled forward... But for me, sometimes you do kind of see that in real life. Like, even if they don't mean it, they'll kind of hit the pile sideways and maybe it'll help them a little bit. But um, that's one thing I did, and I hope this is a big deal. Uh, say there's a wide receiver, right, and there's a, a running back, and your wide receiver is running to block, and you had the ball in the running back. The defender almost runs into the blocker. Like, he makes zero attempt to get out of the way of the blocker. And once again, this goes into how can you make – uh, that's something a user should do, uh, and it's tough for, to make a computer do that. But just the fact they kind of almost want to get blocked more than they want to make the tackle. I don't know how you, uh, if you guys notice that, like defenders want to get blocked more than they want to n make the tackle, essentially. Suction blocking, exactly, Ward. Like they'll be like, it, the angle won't even be good, but then the, the, the defender all, or the, the offensive player automatically like locks into a block pretty much yeah you rarely fall backwards for sure i feel like some tackling animations you just should fall forward and some you should get stonewalled and that goes into ratings really uh hit stick and dive tackles have been tuned to make them more accessible and functional 
all of which come together with our new breakdown tackles for more intuitive defensive experience. I I mean all this stuff sounds great. I just want to see I just want to play, really. Do you think height and weight don't matter in tackling? Cuz I feel like I feel like I've always felt like the taller safeties hit harder. I really do. But then we look around chat and then man, what's his name? Tillman was a monster. He's not that big. Yeah, we'll see. I felt so much of this year was if you didn't have an ability, Don, as you say that, if your tight end didn't have ability, he would get tackled by the, the by anybody, honestly. Um, Location-based tackles, one of the new features that has the Mad Dev team really excited is location-based tackles. These tackles are where you see the running back reach the ball for the pylon at the last second to get that critical touchdown or where the tackling defender will struggle to strain to keep the ball carrier from reaching the first down sticks on a huge fourth down. Here is the breakdown on how these will work. These tackle interactions make our players more aware of their field location and react accordingly, something Madden players have never been aware of where the hell they are on the field. Never. Never knew when they were on the goal line. Never knew when it was fourth and one. So this is a huge W, honestly. A huge W. Uh, this is great. Uh, these tackling interactions more... Blah, 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 blah. While there's not a direct button input for the sticks for these tackles... They will be driven by player ratings and superstar abilities. What that tells me is a lot of random RNG, as they say. RNG, it will be driven by player ratings and superstar abilities. When do I get to fall forward? You know, when when I got unlucky because my guy didn't fight. You know what I'm saying? Um, but then what's the what is the opposite of that, right? What is the opposite of that? Is the opposite of that like a fight for the fumble thing? Or remember Madden 17 when they had the stiff arm or tackle battles? And honestly, I think I'd rather the RNG than the tackle battles or the fight for a fumble mashing buttons. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But So that's tough, you know. Yeah, clutch. But this is what I'm saying. There's ability for this. Clutch abilities. But M. Dot, this is the one thing about Mutt is that when you get to this point of Mutt or whenever Mutt... Uh, as far as clutch and everything like that, I feel like if it's not an ability, if it's just in their traits, I feel like most players are clutch. You know? In addition to the abilities, the defender's tackle and awareness ratings compa compared to the ball carrier's vision and awareness will drive the outcomes of these interactions. So, do you think vision is a big deal this year? Are we gonna Is vision going to have a threshold? If you have 81 vision, do you get those good animations? That'd be pretty cool. We're talking about ball care vision is a rating that literally meant zero. Has never meant anything in Madden. Now, we talk about can Madden, they do more and more to make just everything. Madden is all about speed, right? Speed, height, speed, right? And they're doing more and more every year to make that less of a prominent thing. You know, if Le'Veon Bell has 88 speed, but he has 95 ball carrier vision, so he's getting an extra two yards every run, I think that is something that can make, you know, take him over take him over the edge as one of the best running backs in the game. You know what I'm saying, Chet? I feel like, that's a, I feel like this is a good thing. I feel like, uh, all in all, it sounds dope, you know? Uh, could, could, also, at the same time, do we have a player... Like like Dre Archer, remember how good he was? Is he ass because he's never gonna fall forward? He's never gonna fight. He's get pushed back by everybody. That's pretty cool. Zone drop coach adjustment. This is pretty much the biggest news of Madden uh, of of the entire of the entire thing. This is the biggest news of the entire uh, broadcast. Not broadcast. The entire uh, stream was the zone drop. Coach adjustment. We're introducing a new set of coach adjustments that will allow you as the defensive player to customize the depth of your zone drops for underneath zone defenders. These coaching adjustments will give you the ability to change the drop depths of flat, hook, and curl flat zones in increments of five yards. Also known as uh, flat zones or blue zone or light blue zones, yellow zones, and purple zones. Honestly, I I purple zones. You know, we'll see. But Max, from five yards up, 
up to a max of 30 yards from the line of scrimmage. When using these adjustments, keep in mind that all match zone logic will be disabled and all zone coverages plays while using this adjustment, including the deep zone players. When facing a no-huddle offense, you can turn off these coaching adjustments by using the reset play option in the pre-play adjustments menu. That is a great, that is a great uh, adjustment, or that's a great uh, option because someone catches you in that. Th- say you somebody put it's it's fourth and twenty, and you go thirty yard zones, and uh, and they get the fourth down, and no huddle you, and you, you you're not stuck with those thirty yard zones. Um, when I see this, I have no problem with thirty yards. Um, when I see this one, I, I uh, it would be better to me. This would be really dope if you could do every single underneath zone. You know, I I feel like every every if you did it could do every zone like let make my hard flats five yards, my cloud flats thirty yards, uh, my purple zones five. If you could change every one, you know, uh, I I think that would make it a little bit better. I think it's going to be tough and mess mess around with it. One thing, uh, one thing for me, I mean. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it works. Um, I don't think it's going to change. I don't know what it's going to do. You know, What does it matter if your cloud flats are going 30 yards? And at what speed do they go 30 yards? Right, chat? At what speed do they go 30 yards? Like, Are they still going to cover a corner route? Say you've set them to 30 yards. Like, you know, no, is Juris, no, it's not. It, 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 if I put if I put my flat zones at five, that's a cloud flat, that's a hard flat, that's a soft squat. They're all going thirty yards, or they're all going five yards, every single one. You know, there's only three different zones you can change. When when in actuality, how many different underneath zones are there? There's four yellow zones, I believe. Four yellow zones. There's three flat zones and three curves. So so there's really ten different underneath zones, right? But you can only change three of them. They, they group them into three. All right, create a play, Donkey Shop. Here we go. Now we're going to make a 35-yard corner route that nobody can cover. Yeah, let's make create a play. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they need to be able to react to the quarterback rolling out. But we'll see. I personally feel like this. If you have a 30-yard cloud flat, he really shouldn't cover shit. I really, I really, I really don't think that's a... That's realistic. And we'll see. Maybe if you drop them to 30 yards or 25 yards, whatever it may be, it might be a glitchy zone you could change. But uh, the ability the ability to have hard flats and cloud flats, different flat zones on the field is kind of, you kind of get rid of that with this clock because if you put 30 yards, every single flat zone is going 30 yards. You know? So it, it, it is it is pretty tough. Uh, but we'll see. I think it adds the creativity. The more creativity you can have, the better. I just want to make it hard to pass. But maybe people just, uh, maybe people sometimes, you know, they won't have to, they won't be able to just rely on that corner route open no matter what. You actually have to make a read and see. Also, I hope my 30 yard cloud flat is not stopping a flat route for three yards. Can we agree on that? I feel like if you, like, Say I put a 30-yard cloud flat, right? I sh- I feel like that cloud flat should almost turn his back and run the 25 yards and then turn around and, and, and play zone. Like, he shouldn't be able to stop shit underneath, right? That's how I feel. Like, he should be, wor- like, he should be worse than a deep blue. Like, you should be able to do a flat route and get 10 yards with ease, Right? Otherwise, why not just have 30-yard dudes? A, a, a drag should get 15 yards underneath a 30-yard cloud flat. You know? I think it's something... I, I We'll see how the game plays. But it, it it's, there's nothing... Listen, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having it. Because you don't need to set it. You can go regular... You can go raw dog, regular zones. Yeah, it sounds good. It's definitely something like, man, I want to go see what the difference is between a 30-yard and a 5-yard. Right? That's That's pretty much... Where where the thought process is, you know. All right, quarterback and passing improvements. Um, it was a, a comment earlier. They made pocket passing. The pocket passing is not good. And listen, 
part of that, football is 1,000% going away from the pocket passer. You know, why be a pocket passer? That's my question to you. What is the benefit of being a pocket passer? When you can pass from the pocket and run. You know, it's like getting an ice cream cone, right? But why not get an ice cream cone with toppings? You can have both. Why get the person that's limited? You know what I'm saying? Like, football is going away from that limited person. One million percent. Um, and for, uh, and for me, Colts, no doubt. For me, um, I, for Madden, I, I, I really feel like, you know, you get to choose your quarterback. Now, some of you guys might be might be a Cincinnati Bengals fan. Now, Burrow is not a statue at all, but he's a passer, right? He's not he's not Lamar Jackson. He's not you know Russell Wilson, but he's he's kind of a pocket guy, right? So you're stuck with that. That's your you know. In Madden, you can pick any quarterback you want. We're playing mutt. We're playing salary cap. We're playing CFM. You can pick any quarterback you want. So why in the world would you pick somebody that can't run? Right? So for me, I, I, I really... There is nothing that separates the pocket passer and the and mobile person in Madden. There's none. They did a decent job last year with Tom Brady early in the year. One, hot route master. Pretty cool, right? So we are actually getting closer... To eight, we're getting closer to pocket passers are better. The protected ability with Brady was was awesome early in the year. The, they just broke the pass lead. Hear me on this chat. If they didn't break these pass leading abilities, and then hopefully that's what this article is talking about, to where these quarterbacks could not pass lead deep routes or could not pass lead bombs or could, all they could do is pass lead within ten yards. Everything else was broken. If they and they never fixed that. If they would fix that, pocket passers really had a chance to be great this year, you know? And on top of that, as much as we say that, there are some people that used a statue quarterback, whether it be Ghost or Drenny, all year because there was because of a hot route master. Hot route master gave pocket passers a chance, honestly. You know? And this is the thing, pocket. If they didn't mess up the pass leading, pocket passes would have been that much better. All right, with more balanced run game comes a more reliance on the air attack. To ensure that players will have the tools they need to run more balanced offenses, man 21, we've made some significant improvements to throwing the football. Throwing out of sacks. All quarterbacks will have the ability to throw the ball while being tackled. The accuracy and power of the pass are dictated largely by physics. There's, there's a big bot word right there, physics. The further into the passing animation the quarterback is, uh, the more likely the pass will be accurate. However, if the quarterback gets hit right away, it could be a fumble or it could be a bad pass. You know, and, and this is... This is good. You know, I feel like... I don't want to say we need more pocket fumbles because that, honestly, when you think about football, that's probably half the fumbles at least are pocket fumbles from a quarterback. Um... But we'll see how this works. I think it's better um, than anything. But there's there were some years, honestly, where I would throw the ball just so I didn't get sacked. I knew I could get the ball off. Even if I got hit, it wouldn't go to anyone. It would go to the ground. Maybe uh, sometimes you would throw the ball, get hit, and the ball would just go two yards in front of you, and it's an incomplete. You're not sacked. Or sometimes you fumble way too much long here, my guy, with the 14 months. So, once again, something we have to see how it plays, but it's definitely a positive uh I don't know how this year worked. Could you not throw out of sacks? Uh, also, is it going to be pissing you off on defense because you can't sack the quarterback because he keeps just throwing the ball into the ground without intentional grounding? You know? Uh, deep passes under pressure. New to Man 21 are under pressure throwing animations which allow quarterbacks to contextually speed up their throwing motions when feeling pressure on deep passes. This is like pressure and accurate, but we're going to bomb the ball deep down the field. Um... Now, if, I, if I'm going to bomb, is the pass still going to be accurate? Because the one thing about Madden, let's be honest, that makes Madden, the quarterback is perfect. Perfect. One, is, the quarterback is perfect. You know, 
As opposed to real life, if there's a wide open receiver running down the field in Madden, it is nine. It is 100% a completion. 100%. In real life, no, it's not at all. Even if even if the even if the wide receiver is five ten yards in front of a DB, the quarterback could underthrow it, throw it to the left, throw it to the right, throw it out of his. He can't reach it, and, and that's the biggest difference uh, for me for Madden in real life. Is the quarterback is perfect. You know, is he going to be perfect when he flicks his wrist and throws his 60 yards in the air? Because one thing that was realistic about Madden, bro, the biggest problem with pressure and accurate was the throws inside 10 yards. Those were the ones I think need this contextually speed up were the flat passes or the quick slants or the quick seam. Not not a 90-yard bomb. They, nobody need, like Nobody asked for that. It's more about... Beating the Blitz 9 or the Blitz 8, Blitz 7 and 8 people with short passes. That's where the pressure and accurate really came, reared its ugly head. Not on 40-yard passes. You know what I'm saying? So this is something, Krill, my guy with the sub, this is something, this contextually speed up their throwing motions, this is something that would I think is more important for shit underneath, you know? And for me, to throw the ball 50 yards, you do need to wind up. Even Michael Vick, he needs to wind up a little bit, right? Quarterback branch outs. Quarterbacks can now quickly branch out of the drop back to throw the ball at any time. As soon as the quarterback has received the snap, the receiver button input is given. The quarterback will immediately branch out of his existing behavior and throw the ball to the intended receiver which also includes branching out of play action phase. Quarterbacks will also have more control to branch out of drop backs to scramble. Ooh, moving the, moving the stick either. F- Ooh, okay. Okay. All right, this is a little more stick in the pocket. I like this. Okay. While also re-enabling the controlled rollout movement, which you can toggle by tapping. Okay. This is good. I swear this was not in the game. It used I don't know if it was this year you could tap left trigger or right trigger and you would scramble. Maybe this is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about tuck the ball down. The rollout movement. Okay. Maybe that helps scrambling be better. The one thing about this year that sucks, scrambling in between the tackles was ab- damn near impossible in this game. Now my man lights out with the tier one. Thank you, man. Um Accuracy power tuning with a variety of improvements done to passing. We also did some tunings to improve under pressure and cross body passing accuracy to bring more balance for both making the inaccurate penalties more contextually appropriate to the situation. Sounds good. We've added a new max distance passing power penalty, which will activate when targeting a receiver who is deeper than the quarterback's max passing distance. The max passing distance for each quarterback is dictated by his throw power rating. This penalty also decreases the strength of the pass when throwing deep passes on the run with more severe penalties to throw power for cross-body throws. So in other words, they don't want Vic chucking post routes 80 yards down the field on the run. Big L for this, this, this paragraph right here. Big L. Enhanced the in-game passing feedback, what is it? feedback so that players will have a more transparent understanding about the result of each type of throw. All right, passing feedback. So they'll tell you why the game screwed you. Parity for handoff animations. All handoff animations have been tuned so that all respective handoffs are the same speed going either direction. So we will see no more trust way at quarterback for left-handed dives. Nice. Pass interference and illegal contact. We've added support for more robust management of user-controlled pass interference. We've also, for the first time, the illegal contact penalty. The goal of these is preventing users from intentionally obstructing receivers from getting to the route and or catch spot while trying to overlook incidental and unintentional contact. These penalties will be used in both competitive and simulation game styles and will be called primarily on user-controlled defenders. For franchises, these players can be adjusted. Primarily called. Oh, I have never... Never had a problem with this. Never had said, I want pass interference. Never have I said, have I thought, let me run into a receiver and cause pass interference. You know? I have have never, ever, ever, ever thought this is is something that that needs to be in the game. Have y'all, like seriously. I'm just asking. I'm just asking you guys. Yeah, I, I really don't. At, 
Yeah, but I, it's crazy to say this, man. I have never thought this was a problem. Sometimes a receiver gets stuck on a player. Yes, that's the computer player. So are they going to call? And there's no reason why this shit happens, right? Sometimes they sometimes they bump and then they bump into a zone. So if I'm in cover three, it's 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 third and eight, and my player bumps in, or his player bumps into one of my zones. Are they going to call that? I just don't understand. Who the? I honestly, if you. I, I just don't I, I just don't run into somebody doing that really I really don't don't I really don't run into anybody doing that and I I feel like it's another thing I feel like okay I just this is one thing I, I want to see I want to go into a game with one of you guys and see how many times, say I run dagger, right? How many times you could affect that wide receiver's motion, right? Past five yards down the field. Because I have never, I, no one has ever done that, done that, honestly. I, I I really don't think it, I really don't think, I really don't think. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So like, the only thing I'm worried about is sometimes, okay, this is this is one thing that I think it could come into play, right? So say you're running a crossing route, or say you're throwing a, anything. So your opponent is passing the ball, right? He's throwing this crossing route. Your deep blue is coming down on it, but you pause. But you have to click on real fast and jump in front of him. Say I click on my deep blue, and I, I run in front of him, full I full send to pick the ball off. I bump into the receiver and pick the ball off. Is that P.I.? You know what I'm saying? I just feel like, is that P.I.? No, I really, I have never seen somebody user bump my receivers that far down the field. Now, I myself have, have user pressed bunch, the, the, the point man and bunch. I have user pressed the shit out of him, right? But most of it is in between five yards or in between 10 yards. I've never seen somebody do it 60 yards down the field. I, I, I've never seen that. And this is another thing. If somebody uses, I don't know, that's what I'm saying. If somebody, like, as a passer, if somebody's bumping your receiver, what's the difference between bumping him and covering him? Right? Now, obviously, you could bump him and go cover something else, but therein lies the I'm bumping him within 10 yards type of thing, not 30 yards down the field. If you're getting bumped, third, if their user is bumping a route 10 to 20 yards down the field, you got it. He's covering the route, right? I have never, I have never felt like pass interference needs to be in the game. Never felt that way. Never, I have never felt, I have never felt that it had, it, it needed to be this way, really. Well, Cactus Jack, that in turn is a different argument, right? Not necessarily that you need, not necessarily that you need a penalty, you need your receiver to get on his horse, you know? It just, I just, I have never, I have never, honestly, if this paragraph wasn't here, who would ask for that? I have, ne like, a bot asked for pass interference. Like, seriously, abs, discipline, I just, I'm just, I'm just done. No, no, there's no way 50% of you thought PI was a problem. Of course, there's plays where people bump into people and everything. One, it's not a user. It's the stupid ass purple zone, but floating out, bumping into the receiver. Yes, I know that happens. Yes, one million percent. But there, that's not the user. So, so you want a penalty on a computer that that Tom, Dick, and Harry had nothing to do with? The computer just did it. And and and, and truthfully, I, I just I I don't see it ever. I really don't see it. I, I really, I really have no, I have, no, yo, like, I have no problem with the PI, like none. Dude, don't ever put no fucking poll in my chat ever, ever again. Don't, don't. Who put the poll? Who put the poll? They're getting booted.
their their mod is gone. Chat, how can I see who put a poll in my chat for no reason? Yeah, like I I just have never said pass interference is a problem, bro. Like I, I just I, I I just never have thought pass interference is a problem. Yeah. Pi Pi shouldn't be a man. It just shouldn't. But I, I'm a guy. Let me tell you something, Chad. I'm a guy. That I don't even want pass interference in real life. I don't. I don't want pass interference. This is how I feel about pass interference. If you don't mug somebody, it shouldn't be a penalty. There's like a little hand on like, bro, you get paid to get open and catch the football. If someone putting their hand on your shoulder is stopping you, how good are you really? Seriously. I'm being real. I hate pass interference. I hate this shit. No, seriously. I hate pass interference in real life. No, it's just, I'm telling you, I hate pass interference in real life. I hate it. I hate it. I think I think the NFL because oh because oh because obviously they want more passing they want everything. I think pass interference is just a soft ass. Seriously, I think it's super soft. Yeah, I I think I think the passing game, the interactions between DBs and wide receivers is super duper soft right now. I really do. The Saints game was absolutely crazy, but let's be honest, chat. It was great that it happened to the Saints, right? The Saints game was crazy. <laughs> no, no. See, y'all, y'all taking what I'm saying way too far, bro. Like, like y'all taking it way too far. I'm not saying no virus, no pi. I'm just saying it's the way it's called now is super soft. It's super soft. Like for real, nobody was ever upset that that happened to the Saints. Yeah, pi P- shouldn't be part of Madden. Seriously, never been a problem. This yo. P.I. has never been a problem in Madden. P.I. is just, uh, it's just soft. The NFL is just, the way they call it is just absolutely soft. It's just soft, bro. Yeah. People win games in real life because of P.I. Like, they'll just chuck some shit up. Oh, it's P.I. You know, it's just like, one, P.I. shouldn't, I, I don't know, bro. I just feel like it's soft, bro. It's just soft. I, I do, I do think it's soft. Yeah, P.I., P.I. is just soft. Yeah, the spot foul. The spot foul is ass. You do you do an eighty yard bomb like boom up. Oh, here we go. I just feel like I feel like wide receivers should be better. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think it should definitely. I think the hand, the hand on somebody, the fact that yo, if you put your hand like, bro, why can't I put my hand on somebody? Like, why can't I put my hand on his back? You know what I'm saying? That that's that's how I feel is nuts, really. I don't know. I just, I just feel like PI is soft to begin with, but and I don't I I never thought it was a problem in Madden, bro. Never thought I, Madden needs PI. That's the biggest bot shit in the world. P.I. My receivers aren't getting open. They're getting bumped. Like, and this, this is the other thing. We talk about the zones. Like, bro, sometimes, like, bro, like, okay, in real life, I'll be honest, I played tight end. I'm not fucking Gronkowski. I'm just a regular human being. Play. Sometimes I would I'd be like, W run a slant, right? My name was W forever. There's always W, like, since I was, like, 14. 
They'll be running slant. Sometimes I run my slant, right? I I, I, I got to run my Oh, shit. It's a, it's a linebacker right there, right? I got to, like, juke. I got to move a little bit, right? I don't just run my slant and he's invisible, right? You have to change your you have to change your pattern sometimes because there's you got to get out of the way of people. You can't just run right through them. So essentially, if I'm running an out route and the the slot corner is in a purple zone and I'm running, he's right here. I got to go around them. I wasn't a block. That was I wasn't a blocker. That was my problem. I was I was like Ocho Cinco of tight ends. I blocking was not me. All right, I'm, I'm the, you guys. Oh, there's a difference between rerouting. Shut the fuck up. What? Like, what? Then that's essentially what it is. Right? Like, shut up, bro. I'm just done. I'm just done. If you want PI in Madden, you're a fucking bot. That's, that's just done. Just done. You're. I've never heard anybody. Like, nobody has ever said anything about this. Of all the shits to complain about, pass interference was never one of them from anybody that was any good in Madden. Never said we need PI in Madden. Never. Never been said. Ever. In their life has that been said. That's it. That's it. Period. If you want pass interference in Madden, if you, uh, you're just a bot. My man Cole with the 18 months. Thank you, man. I'm just like, like, for real, you're just a bot. I don't even want to talk about it no more. Defensive contained balance. You're a bot. One of the more popular, and it's cool to be a bot. It's okay. I'm a bot at every other game that I play. I'm pretty much damn near a bot at Madden. It's okay. 99% of the world is bots. You are one of them. It's okay. Accept it. That's it. PI is for bots. No, I was not a demon. I could catch. All I could do is catch, and I'm kind of tall. For regular humans. When you get to like D1, I'm not tall. I'm small, actually. Damn. Like, bro, that shit's just like, little P.I. Bots run the world, bro. One of the more popular online strategies Man 20 was the contain blitz. Oh, here we go. Here we go. In quotations. The contain blitz. Uh-oh. Here we go. Nah, I was tall and I could catch. Players told us that this felt unbalanced because unblocked contained players were very effective pass rushers. Of course, they're unfucking blocked. Read that sentence. Read this sentence. Players told us this felt unbalanced because unblocked contained players were very effective pass rushers. This is really a sentence. This is a sentence. Unblocked people were effective. I hope to God they were effective. Nobody touched them. Nobody touched them. Nobody touched them. I can't believe this, bro. Contains definitely rush before you run. That's a that's a lie. Because this is what makes me mad that this is really a sentence. But also, very quick to react to scrambling quarterbacks. Well, it depends on who it was. Let's be honest, man. If, if you had... If you had uh, K.J. Wright trying to d- contain Michael Vick, eh, maybe not that good. If you had Clowney trying to contain Michael Vick, yeah, he's getting tackled. So again, the theme of balance, we've made some changes to contain behavior. When utilizing pass rush schemes that free up the contain player from being blocked via an overload, okay, this will now allow, will now rush the quarterback at a slower speed than he were not in the contain assignment. As long as the comp- quarterback is inside the pocket, okay. Uh, okay, so he should like walk and kind of be bro- he should kind of be like breaking down and waiting for the contain rather than rushing. I will tell you this in my entire life of contains, right? My entire life of playing man, contains are broken. They're broken. They're either the most overpowered thing on a game or they're just absolutely pointless. There is no way to get a contain to work right. I'll be honest. Madden 20 the contains were really 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 good. The problem with them is they got cut blocked. I mean, they got if contains didn't get cut blocked, they were super good this year, super good this year. Honestly, too good. Contains shouldn't engage with blockers. Contain maybe contains just stand there and wait for a rollout. That's a good, that's a good, I think that's pretty, pretty good. But then this is what used to happen. Uh, 
this is what no we have not talked about the cfm yet we'll talk about that next when i'm done the deep dive we'll talk about cfm big bear i appreciate you joining but um one thing that happened in the past is that if your contains didn't rush now they're picking off drags now they're picking off flat passes now they're picking off screens and so like where do you want do you want them to not rush and not react to passes you know it, it i'm telling you contains have always been broken to some point and for me, this year they were very, very, very good. Unless they got cut blocked or double teamed. Which, if if you double team a contain, it shouldn't be able to contain. Do y'all agree with that? I, I feel that way. If you if you put two of your linemen or a tight, two blockers on a contain, you should be able to roll out. But contains getting... Honestly, the biggest thing they should fix, if contains didn't get cut blocked, I think you're good. Right, chat? If a contain didn't get cut, I think the game, I think you're you're good on contains. And anybody that says contain blitz, it, 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 like, it, the, like, it's crazy to me that people say contain. Now, there's been years where contain blitzing was really OP because, like, you would put the contain right next to a blitzer and he would loop out and nobody would see him and contain blitz what... This year was not the case. Contain the contain blitzing. I it, it just wasn't really a thing this year. It, it obviously people contain, but it's not the reason why the blitz was good. This will change. This change will bring balance by giving the defense an ability to quickly react to a scrambling quarterback with an unblocked contain player while giving up a little power in the pass rush. Catch. Catching responsiveness. Like many of our other features improvements, Man 21 has a strong focus on player control and uh, agency? Agency? Ag uh, I've never heard that word used like that. Agency? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I bad at English? I've never heard the word agency used like that. No. Catching is no different. We've made a few tweaks to our catching system to offer more stick work towards making plays. Which, honestly, I, if you guys know me, I feel like stick is very important in catching the football this year. Very, very, very important stick work. Agency is user control, is it? Is that what it is? I, I didn't know that. Focus on player control and agency, really? I don't know. I don't read enough about video games. Players can now dictate the direction they want their catch to take them as they secure the catch via the left stick input. For example, when holding up on the left stick using the possession catch, you'll be selecting a possession catch that will fall in the same direction as your stick input. And Oh, that's pretty cool. Ensuring that a receiver won't go to the ground short of the sticks. Awesome. This increases in control and also critical when throwing underneath routes as the responsiveness allows receivers to quickly turn. Ah, this sounds really cool. One obvious case to notice this improvement is when a receiver is nearing the sideline. The user will have the control to keep him in bounds as he turns upfield rather than running out of bounds. Now, I will tell you. I will tell you. I felt like I got good at that. The best passers got good at throwing the ball, staying in bounds, and getting extra yards. I will tell you that. I, the best the best guys did get good at that. And I feel like I'm, I get really... If I have an open flat route, as long as I don't have to snap throw it, I'm getting 10 yards on that. I, that's how I feel. You know, I, I felt like... You know, we'll see how it works. You know? Aggravated, it'll be on YouTube tomorrow. I really do feel like uh, I catching the ball, the, and and w one thing that that mostly yo user like user catching the ball is so important and so critical. It's such a big part of passing in Madden 20. It really is, and it's so un understated by so many people. It really is. You know, I I really think it's. See, no, nah, don't, don't, the see, they're, they're, they're like, no, see, they're, they're Wesleyan Skimbo will have, I've never come in here and said, though, we need more flags, 1 million percent trolling. Yeah, basically, they're going to let people swerve and do the things that Fancy can, that J Wall that does, that Kiv does, that, that Wesley does, that Skimbo was, I'll be honest, Skimbo was the first person that was swerving the shit out of catches. I'm talking like week two. On a wheel route, and like he's like, yo, if I swerve this joint, I can get a better animation and get more yards. I swear to God, and I don't even like telling Skimbo that he does shit better. Than, I don't even like giving him credit, but he was the first person like really changing the angle of their. And I was like, yo, this shit works. So we talk like 
I, I felt like the best players were good at doing this. But now it makes it easier for everybody to do this. So, all in all, I think it's a good thing for Madden, but... You know, I, I do think... Uh, I do think that uh, a lot of players have been doing this without this feature, you know? The only thing I... The only route I cannot get more yards on is a drag. I really have no idea how to get yards on a... I, I, I never want challenges in Madden. Never challenges. No, get that get this shit out of here. But bye. No, 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 no. N- never want challenges ever, ever, De- ever. I'm so glad they took that shit out the game. Anything that delays me playing the game, that makes me stop playing and wait for the computer to do shit, I never want it in Madden. You know. Uh, it, it, it's good for the community, but you say it will lower the skill gap. But maybe one player could take it that much further. One, you can use the left stick, but you can also click on and get a better angle. It could be honestly more. No. Yeah, I don't know. If you ever want a halftime show, if you ever want a halftime show in Madden, one, you play two Madden games a week, and you this really is not the spot for you. Sir, it's really just not. I'm sorry. I'm I'm I am not the person you come to for Madden content ever. I'm just not. If you want a halftime show, I have ADD. I want to get to the next play. I want to keep playing the game. I don't want to watch shit. If I want to watch shit, ESPN is right here on my other monitor. Let's watch that. That's all I'm saying. And I'll be honest, chat. This is kind of like commentary. All that stuff is cool the first time I hear it, right? A halftime show would be cool as hell the first time you hear it. But this is a chat full of people that play thousands of Madden games. After 10 times, I'm tired of seeing the halftime show. Bro. Stop. Yo, y'all really trolling. I'm, this was literally the last podcast ever. They were just full of trolling. Player personnel packaging, another huge point of the uh, the broadcast. Um, one thing that Madden that Madden changed. Uh, I want to say maybe five years ago or something. You used to be able to audible to anything. There used to only be five audibles, right, Chat? And you could put anything. You could put goal line, quarterback sneak, hail mary, uh, jet sweep. You could put stretch, and you could put a uh, bunch of verticals. Those could be your five audibles. And you could come out and goal line and audible to a bunch of verticals. Or you can come out and goal line, go to five wide, go to jet sweep, go to any formation you want with no restriction, but you only had five audibles. That's how it was. No, no, I swear to God. Like, you could literally do this. Yes. Now... They ch- now they changed it a couple years ago where you could only audible to your personnel set, which is awesome, you know. Um, which was a huge W. Also, all the quick audibles, bi- having that many audibles at your disposal, super W. Everything was great about it. Um, so, but you could not audible to something with two tight ends if you were in three wide receivers, and, and vice versa. You had to stay within your your for- formation personnel grouping. This year. The prepay audible system now considers the actual personnel on the field. When changing your personnel in the play call menu, either via packages or formation subs, your preplay audibles will now match the personnel package on the field. If you are using uh, 12 personnel, one fullback, two tight ends, in a formation like gun empty flex, you will now be able to audible to any other formation in your playbook that also uses 12 personnel. For now, this feature only applies to the offense, but it continues to evolve. We are looking for more opportunities to continue and expand upon it. One, let me tell you something. They are going to glitch the hell out of this. But this is going to be absolutely broken. I, I, I'm i telling you. It is going to be goal line or something to bunch. It is going to be spread to to uh, wing tight or whatever the hell they run with the three tight ends. Single back wing Z right to f- five. I'm telling you, they're going to find a way to do it. Also, yes, also let me tell you this. So this says, now considers the actual personnel on the field. Okay, so now essentially I can put three tight ends in and bunch and go to goal line, right? I can go, I can put a fullback in at tight end and put three tight ends and I can go goal line to bunch if it considers my personnel due to the formation subs, right? I can go to bunch the tight end. I, 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 I think I really don't, uh, that, and that's what it's going to be. And this is why you got the, the most important, and honestly, the most important position 
really going forward in Madden is going to be those fast tight ends that can kind of play a pseudo uh, wide receiver like Ingram or Noah Fan. Who else? Who else is like some fast tight ends? Uh, not necessarily even good ones, but if you're fast enough to play wide receiver, you know, it'll be fun to really experiment and see what you guys can do. Uh, it's going to, it's going to, it's going. I I think it's going to be uh, a big deal, really, honestly. Waller, so you get Waller, Ingram. Say you get Waller, Ingram, and Tyree Kill, and you get Juice at fullback, and you get a running back. So you can go bunch to single back, wing Z, stretch and dive. And then go buff up to bunch any passing formation. You go Waller. You go Waller. Uh, you go. Say you go Waller. You can get Kittle. Uh, it's just it's going to be tough, man. Seriously, it is going to be tough. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be creativity. It's going to be really tough, honestly. So we'll see. Uh, honestly, the more things you can do offensively, you got to give it. You got it. Got to be a good thing, right? It has to be a good thing. Uh, I don't think it could be bad. But uh, what's crazy? Is I I think I think more people are gonna wind up complaining about this than 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 loving it. Really? Yeah. Will this will this finally kill dollar or one four six the entire game? Will that kill that? You know. Um, and also, will it show? Will it show your uh? Will it show your personnel and your formation? Like it does this year, it shows your personnel and your formation. Will it now show a bunch, two tight ends, two running backs, and one wide receiver? No, but I just I just feel like, oh, this sucks. Everybody's doing the same thing. But for me, uh, it's a chance to be more creative. So that's always a great thing, uh, always a good thing for offensive players and players that can be creative. I, I think it's a good thing, honestly. Yeah, nickel. I think nickel will be. I, I think that's where you have to start your defensive search is in some type of nickel, whether nickel normal three three five, uh, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, I think nickel will definitely be a strong defense. It kind of always is, right? Kind of always is strong. Uh, balance for repeated audibles and play flips and pre play. Another aspect, this I mean, this is just another aspect to bring more balance to run pass ratio is authentic solution for spamming audibles and play flips by the offense before the snap until an advantageous alignment for a running play is found. This popular tactic will now carry some risk. The offense will now have the risk of the offensive line committing a false start penalty after the use of multiple audibles or play flips, and the chance of the penalty will significantly increase with each additional audible thereafter. This penalty has been put into place to simulate the confusion the offensive player would likely have the quarterback change the play three to six times while sitting in his pre-play stance the entire time, and it applies to all game styles and difficulties. Huge W, I guess. You know, if you have to audible three times... You know, this this really isn't it. Honestly, I would put in motions too. I would put in I would add a motion as an audible, really. If you if you motion, audible, then flip, I feel like that's three, right? You know? That's I, I, I feel like this gotta be a W because really what's the Yeah, they, they you will get be able to flip once. Three times is the limit. Right, three times is the limit. You can flip twice. You can audible once and flip. Uh, it seems like three is the number. Once you get to three, then you might be getting a false start, and then so on and so forth. The more you do it, the more likely you'll get a false start. Yeah. I don't think flipping was that big. Uh, flipping was more for the run last year than, than the pass, really. So uh, obviously, this is a gr- a good thing. It really, I I honestly, I, I don't see anybody can have a complaint about this. Player fatigue for out of position ball carriers. Um, this is for jet sweeps, blast. Your player will get more tired. Although, I, I don't know how Michael Vick could get more tired than he does now. I, I have no idea why they would make him get lose his stamina even more. After two blasts, he's ready to come out of the game. So, we'll see. I mean, we're all excited about Lamar Jackson, what he can do on regs. Uh, but if he's going to be tired after one play, we'll see. And the same thing with jet sweep, wildcat. Uh, that's great. Wildcat. Yeah. Good. This is good. The, honestly, this is really good. Uh, have no problem. Yeah. So this is, this is a good thing. Really kicking game tuning. We received feedback from some aspects of the game where in need of improvement. 
kick meter on competitive game style has been tuned to be more skill based meaning it will be more difficult to get accurate kicks for competitive play and the missing of accuracy windows will be slightly more punitive uh, I've been saying that for the longest kicking is way too easy kicking should be hard like it should be tough honestly kick power win impact has been tuned on simulation game style so that kickers and punters don't always la launch unrealistically deep kicks while the wind impact on the game uh, we tune the ball physics to bring more skid to the ball and kicks bouncing to the turf to make the coffin corner kickoff exploits scum kick much more difficult to execute great job man scum. the ball won't bounce and just sit there on kickoff so the, that, that that's a good thing but we all if you play madden there will be some type of scum kick now they'll now they'll like scum it in the middle and it'll, it'll turf bounce all the way to the one yard line. Don't worry, no, they never take off scum. Scum kicks will always be a part of Madden. Always, they will never get rid of scum. You can try to get rid of scum, but the scum guys always win, bro. They always win. Ability improvements. Woo, this is what we've been waiting for, boys. And that's why we introduced Superstar X Factor abilities into the game. While these abilities brought a ton of excitement for different strategies to gameplay, we also recognize that in our first attempt at adding this in this game context, that some of our abilities were a bit unbalanced. Here are some of the most critical changes we've made to existing Superstar X Factor abilities. Wide receiver route ability balancing. Wide receivers have a number of abilities granting them catching bonuses on specific route types. No, it granted them the automatic 100% catch. These abilities, while strong, were difficult, difficult to use since they required detailed knowledge of your team's playbook or very specific hot routes that may not always be available in Madden. Who the hell said that? Which, which, which wide receiver ability was difficult to use? Hold on. Oh my god, this is bot alert right here. This is bot alert right here. In Madden 21, we have reworked these abilities that grant their bonuses when the receiver catches the ball in specific areas of the field. Rega oh, instead of a post flag elite, they have middle of the field elite or short pass elite. Oh my god, dude. In Madden 20, we have reworked these abilities that grant their bonuses when the receiver catches the ball in specific areas of the field, regardless of the route they are on. This allows them to accomplish the initial goal of creating receivers that excel at making plays on specific route types while making them much easier to utilize. This is, yeah. So if you ever, chat, if you ever get mad at EA, what they're putting in the game, you have to realize who their target audience is. There it is. Right there. The guys that want PI and can't get post flag elite to work. They can't get post flag elite to work, and they want PI in the game. Literally, this is who EA makes their game for. We just play it. You got you to gotta realize that. So many times we don't realize that. Coverage defender ability balancing. On the other side of the ball, we had the opposite issue with coverage defender abilities in Man 20. Abilities like Man Dubber, Zoned Out, and Universal Cover were essentially one-stop shops. It was too easy to pick up one of these abilities on a defender and just set it and forget it. I don't get it. Ultimately, we didn't like how easy it was to make a defensive powerhouse with very little ability investment. As a solutionist, we have split these abilities up into multiple versions that grant their bonuses across specific areas of the field, mirroring the new wide receiver abilities. Now coverage defenders will need to specialize in defending the area of the field rather than being able to cover the whole gridiron. Additionally, universal coverage has been converted to an X-Factor ability, so the idea of a powerhouse play the whole field defender can still exist. You just have to earn it. Okay. So, like, is it going to be a deep coverage ability, like cover deep or cover medium or cover short? Hard, yeah, like, I just guard the hard flats. Like, what? I mean, let's be real. I mean, we would just get a deep blue specialist, right? You would just put your safety in deep blue specialist or, or deep defense. That's fucking nuts. I'm be real. In regs, I felt like zoned out. I felt like uh, uh, we all tested this. Uh, regs, the zoned out shit works, right? I, that's how I felt. That's how it was in the beginning of the year. Remember, Byron Jones was just crazy, right? In mud, I th that ability, bro, th bro, kick rocks. Uh, seriously, I as I think about it, I really don't know why I even use universal coverage. I really don't. I really have no idea. I feel like I should just have another tackle ability or, or lumberjack or something. I don't think... And also, let me hear you this. 
Has anybody ever said that manned up, zoned out, universal coverage was too good? Yeah, in regs, Wesley, yes. Now, now bring that back to Mutt. In Mutt, yeah, I feel like I feel like it never worked. Right? Yeah, I feel like it's just it's just a waste. Yeah, I, I don't know. And I said that. Regs it was really good. I don't know. I never thought these were good in, in Mutt. I never thought they were good in Mutt. Never thought these these abilities were good in Mutt. So we'll see. I I I, I don't know. Yeah, the corner route, post route, corner route, post route, just unguardable regardless. Man up, man up, man down, man sideways. Corner route, post route, they're they're open. Pass leading ability balance. The pass lead abilities from Man Twenty were fairly polarizing. They were ass. They allowed you to make some impressive plays and throw receivers open in the best of circumstances. They were ass. But more often than not, they could result in throwing uncatchable passes that were out of reach of receivers. Good job, Madden. There you go. More often than not. In Madden 21, we have removed the increased leading distance of these abilities and instead boosted the ball's velocity when using precision passing. Mechanic on the left stick in combination with the bullet pass. This new benefit greatly reduces the ability for defenders to make a play on the ball when making the correct read and should prove to be a powerful perk for pocket passers. Let's hope, honestly. That's what it looks like. It looks like a, a, a pseudo gunslinger, right, boys? We'll see. Anything to help. At, like I said earlier in the, st- in the stream, if precision passing worked, if they didn't smoke every other pass, uh, Brady and them would have been more than usable, honestly. Uh, yeah, so... We have a ton of additional information to share with you regarding new abilities coming in Man 21, as well as more updates from the previous season that have been re-imaged, imagined. Stay tuned for upcoming news. What's next? Our next Gridiron Notes will be Tuesday, June 30th. Today! Ah, focus on face of the franchise and classic franchise. Where do we go to see these? I am on, this is um the Madden Direct. Is this it? Boom. Face of the franchise. Face of the franchise looks like a Bobo. It looks like a Bobo uh, long shot, right? Face of the franchise, I feel like it's Bobo long shot. Go to high school, college, combine, and draft. Earl, you said you wanted to play the combine? Here you go. Here you go. Here goes all you CFM nerds, bro. Play high school. But look, you get interviews. You play the combine. Let's see. Look, Earl, you can play the combine. No, Wesley, you'd be surprised. They fucking care about all this shit. Every little bit of it, they care. Stop it. NFL storylines, franchise save. Yo, you can be any one of these guys. Dream team, the comeback. See, Earl, you got all this stuff. I know it's not CFM. But this this in lies what I talked about when the show started was... Bro, they're trying every little bit. You know, they're trying to, like, re- get a new audience, get new players, get new people interested in the game. Uh, you know, and, and, oh, they got characters. Tommy Matthews, career-long rival and friend, played by Ty Sheridan. Reggie Brown, former Eagle receiver. Interviewer and friend, played by Michael Beach and Moses Jones. Okay. Coach Fatal Vitae, high school legend and football coach, Cooper Andrews. Coach Red O'Brien, Red Bryant, I mean, you know who? Defensive mastermind college coach. Snoop Dogg played by himself, and Rich Eisen played by himself. Man 21 Classic Franchise Updates. Is this what we want to read? Are we on CFM now? All right. Let's talk about this, man, because let's talk about the CFM. All right? Because I want your help. Now, I want to preface everything I say about CFM like this, right? Want to preface everything I say. I've played CFM my whole life. Before MCS, I was a CFM warrior. I played with uh, T-Funk. I don't know how old you guys are in the Madden. T-Funk, I always played in his CFM from like Madden 10 to like Madden 13, Madden 25. Every year I'd play in CFM super heavy, like super heavy. 
I have played the hell out of CFM, dude. I have played CFMs with Problem. I played CFMs. Obviously, that's how I. That's not how I know Vilma, but I played with Vilma. That's how I know. That is kind of how I know a lot of people in the band community outside of my outside of you know just the competitive community. CFM, honestly, I've always played it, uh, and I played it this year with with Big Strap. I played it last year with the Ram. I've played it every year. I've played CFM. Now I love CFM. I love playing it, but uh, the reason I play it. And the reason I play Madden, I, I like competing. I like playing the game. I like playing Madden. You know, and CFM adds a lot of things like building a team. It adds, obviously, improving your players. It adds a schedule. You play your friends. Uh, the competition is pretty much... At CFM, uh, the competition is what thrives me to play Madden. I'm saying I, I enjoy it. Uh, see, yes. Yes. Abilities, I want to say abilities. You need abilities to play Madden 20. And sometimes CFM, you don't control your abilities or anything. I, I really think uh, CFM is awesome. I, I really, I, I don't know what more people want from a CFM. Obviously, there's tons of things you could improve. I, that's everything. From the, from every game, you can improve on anything. Like, uh, But for me... I thought CFM was awesome this year and last year. I really do. I, I, I really feel like with a good group of guys, uh, you can get absolutely everything out of CFM. I really do. Um, but at the same time, there's no reason why it can't improve every single year. You know what I mean? Um, so it definitely should always be improving. So the fact that something doesn't get any type of acknowledgement is never a good thing. Uh, I, I, I have seen, I saw a list, this list was given to me by somebody on Twitter. It obviously was a copy and paste list, uh, from somebody. And, and, and for me, uh, where is it at? Where is, uh, some kid posted this and I said, please join the podcast cause I could use your help essentially, you know, because I, I, I Madden really for me is here, here's, here's what. And this is a Reddit post. Anything with Reddit is just. I uh, see. Let me tell you this. CFM is an afterthought, and I, I will tell you why CFM is an afterthought. Because us people, because I am the CFM player. I play CFM. I've played it my whole life. We're not going anywhere, right? We are going to play the shit out of CFM because CFM is fun. The whole the whole idea of CFM is awesome. Playing your friends is awesome. If if you play the computer. I'm, I have no words for you. We're not on. The, we're not the same. You know, if you want to play the computer, you want the computer. We're not the same. And I'm sorry. Like I said, I, I, we're just not the same. And I, I really don't have anything to say about that. Because for me, I play video games because I play other people. I, I like playing other humans and interacting with other people and playing with my friends, either against them or with them. And video games is what makes gaming this popular. Playing the computer is not what makes gaming popular. It's just, it's seriously, it's not. It's not what makes gaming enjoyable. It's not what gaming is now. It's just not. The social aspect of it is what makes it great. So anything that pertains to the computer and what the computer does, I, I really have no argument with that. But uh, I agree with that. You need so much work to get a 32-man CFM to work. That's part of the reason why I stopped playing CFM this year. I don't want to rely on other people to, to for my enjoyment of Madden. I agree with that. If you're not in a CFM, if you're not, uh, if you don't have a good group of guys, it could be really rough. I agree with that, and that's what sucks. And sometimes you might have to play the computer, but uh, you just got to keep going. You need a good commissioner. I agree. It, it is it is tough. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but playing the computer, playing the computer in any type of game for me just isn't fun. Whether it's chess. Whether that's just just isn't the computer is because this is how I feel about the computer, right? Seriously, this is how I feel about the computer. The computer couldn't kick my ass at everything chess, Madden, Call of Duty, uh, whatever game it is, the computer has the ability to kick my ass, right, chat? If the computer ratcheted it up, you could not beat a computer at anything. Literally, the computer can outsmart you, outmove you, shoot you before you get a gun off. Literally, computer is unbeatable in, te- in, in games. It's unbeatable. But it dumbs itself down so you can compete with that. 
So for me, that's like insulting. Like, bro, <laughs> like, at what level do I have to put this so I can actually compete with it? Like, playing the computer for me is just, it's just like, yes. Like, the computer chess is unbeatable. Chess master is unbeatable. Um, yes, if the computer wants to cheat, you will. If the computer knows you're coming around the corner, compute, around the corner in Call of Duty, you're getting shot. It's just how it works. Never miss a read. So for me, I don't like playing the computer or anything. So anything... I mean, I like the, and it be, okay. So this is the list that I got. It's a Reddit post. You guys know how I feel about Reddit. Reddit is where the bots. That is the bots layer, as they say. I don't even know. This might be too big for you guys to even see this. I'm just gonna read this. This is Madden. Uh, oh, let me see if I can just make this smaller so y'all can see it. Y'all can see it while I read it. This is Madden franchise options from Madden 05 that aren't in Madden 20. Now, first of all. This is an this is an ongoing argument throughout like the Madden Reddit world is that Madden 05 and games that their franchise mode was better than this year, and to me that's I I just feel like it's fucking insane that to say that that I I I just I just don't know I just I, but full they get to sign a whole coaching staff that that sounds pretty fucking cool I, I I can't wait to pick my running back coach I just I can't wait that for me. That one, I, I honestly d don't add more data to my than my my downloadable Madden for me to be able to sign a running back coach. I have no desire to do that. If if you really want to sign a running back coach, we we are not the same. I don't want another gig on my Madden download so I can sign a running back coach. Eighteen training staff groups to sign with an overall scale. I also again I don't that that means nothing. Full coach ratings and progression. I am the coach. My mind is the coach. You feel me here, chat? Like, me playing Madden, I am the coach. I make the decisions. I don't care if my coach is a 99. If I want to punt on fourth and one, I'm going to punt on fourth and one. Right? Now, if if that coach then makes your players better, maybe that's good. But ultimately, you control the coach. If you win 16 games, your coach gets better. It's you're in control of the coach. Okay. Create a team. Isn't that what the fuck you're doing? Creating a team? Also... I, some some of this sh some of this shit baffles me, right? Cause I'm a diehard sports fan, right? It's why I play sports games. Cause I'm a diehard fan, right? I don't know why you would get in franchise mode and not control your favorite team. Also, if you're not a diehard sports fan, what? I don't know, like how you get enjoyment out of playing. For me, I want to control the Eagles. I want to make the controllers tough. Or the Eagles tough. But that's me being a diehard. You know what I'm saying? So maybe making a creative team would be cool. You know, but I I would I would mark that as like let's make the Los Angeles or, or the Las Vegas or the Las Vegas got a team now. Let's make the the the, the Montana Miners, right? I'm gonna make that a team. I think that could be in the game. Why could that not be in the game? It'd be cool, right? Online CFM. I want a new team. Boom. I want to be the Montana Miners, right? It's CFM Draft League only. I have no problem with that. That could definitely be in the game going forward. The scout. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Wait, bird. Let me finish this and we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Copy and paste. Copy and paste everything you said. Uh, rename stadium full player. Full player wants. What does that mean? Like I want strippers at my signing party. Rename stadium. Rename stadium, bro. We are like once again. Do not add to my download of men. Full player wants. I, I don't. I mean, I really don't know what that is. Like, I want. I want to escalate in my signing bonus. I really don't know. Dedicated retirement screen. What the hell is that? Somebody talk to me. This is what Man 05 had that they that, that they think their franchise man was better. Restricted free agents. Now. I, I'm not sure. I thought CFM had restricted free agents. If, and I say this again, if CFM doesn't have restricted free agents, that's a super L. I, I can't even get over that. I I don't really know. See, in NFL, I don't know how restricted free agents are weird in NFL. And that if a player is really good, the team will re-sign them. You know, not a lot of great players in their prime hit free agency like that, you know? So restricted free agency, it's really not 
a huge part of real life NFL, but it's still a part and it's something they should definitely have. One million percent. Compensatory picks, yeah, I mean that's definitely some things they should have. You know, but are they think this is why I come to like that's not like a, a make or break thing, but it definitely one million percent. I mean, restricted free agents and picks, I guess. Trackable historic stats. Uh, don't they record the stats? Yeah, like they always record the stats for me. Yeah, booze and cheers. Trust me. Mock drafts is pretty cool. I like mock drafts. I don't know how much I would sit doing a mock draft of my CFM. Like, tomorrow's the draft. Let me sit and do a mock and see where my play. I don't know if I do that. So, I don't think that's a big deal. Not from years past. I feel like they do. I feel like if your player goes off a couple years, like, Big Strap had 30,000 passing yards. What do you mean, like, like they don't have, like, Sonny Jurgensen's or they don't have, like, Norm Van Brocklin or Bart Starr's not on there? Is that what you're asking? I, I don't know. I, I, like, I feel like they recorded my man's stats, bro. Mock drafts, like I said, that's a little weird. Live draft with fan reactions. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Draft grades A to F. I feel like they have that. That, to me, that negotiable rookie signings with hidden overalls, training camp. Uh, I do feel like the offseason was a little bit bullshit in, in CFM. But for me, I want to go back to week one, baby, right? Like, don't give me no, like, I don't want to really do training camp. Oh, like, give you, like, they would give, like, a predicted mock draft, like, rather than sitting there doing the mock draft. Okay, that's not bad. But then you go Buckeye, they'd have to make like fake, fake, like our ESPP is putting out this mock draft. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. The scouting can be better. I, I don't really remember what the scouting was like. I felt like the scouting was kind of shitty. You know? I felt like the scouting was kind of shitty. But to me, I... I don't know, like... How can scouting be in CFM? Like, let's talk about it. Like, how can you make scouting better? Like, this is pretty much what it came down to for me was how fast is his 40, right? What's his height? It's Madden, dude. Like, honestly, uh, yeah, I, I just don't, for me, it was just how fast did they run, honestly. That was pretty much the biggest thing for me. I was like I was like Al Davis. How fast does this guy run? I'm picking him up. You know? Draft classes were terrible. I did feel like if you didn't have a top 10 pick, whoever you had was terrible. You know? I felt like you had no chance of getting a sleeper, really. What, P at PTA Sports, what are some things you would want to see in in-depth information on a player in Madden that would make you want to pick him? Give me an example of something that you would get from a player in, in Madden or in real life. What is some in-depth thing you could do that to find out what he is, you know? You're not going to watch game film on this player. What could they do? Seriously. Yeah, draft classes, bro. Improving draft classes, I agree. But that's honestly an easy fix, really. It should be an easy fix. Importing draft. Where are you importing a draft class from? Okay, you can't import a draft class you know, you can't get players that they don't have the rights to. You know, it's like, you want a Wonderlick test. College stats. College stats is something I guess they could put in the game. But now here we go with, uh, now this is what I'll ask. And I don't remember for sure. Did they, did they show like real colleges they went to? Like this person went to Texas or this person went to LSU. Did they say that? I want to say they said something like that. No, I'm just at, like... Ability to edit superstar traits. Updated terminology. Now, see, the franchise guy, for me, it's like, okay. Update. I, my, 
why would the compute? Why would the compute? I don't understand. Computer ass uh, assign Khalil Mack to play off ball. I control all of that, right? I control every. If I want to put Khalil Mack in the yellow zone, I control that. I don't understand why that type of thing matters. Honestly. Import a draft class would be cool, um, for sure. Uh, all right. So once again, if we're talking about playing, if we are talking about playing the computer, I'm 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 honestly not interested in that. Huh? Incentives and contracts. Yeah, but Big Bird, how would incentive? How would an incentive and contract work? Right. It's not real money. Like, explain to me how that would work, right? I literally control the team. Okay, I have Tyree Jackson as my quarterback. If you pass for 5,000 yards, you get another million dollars, right? Who gives a shit? And ultimately, I control whether he throws 5,000 yards. So if I don't want him to get, if I don't want him to get the incentive, I'll just stop at 4,500. Or if I do want him to get the incentive, I'll get it. No, seriously. Like, <coughs> what's, where, where, like, like, where is the, talk to me. Where is, like, the, the fun in that shit? It would be cool if it was, like, okay, you'll get more progression if you reach this point or something. You know? Let's not make it about money, though. Let's make, it's about realism and depth. It opens up cap space. So essentially, Big Bird, I could put, okay, I could give him a ten million dollar signing bonus, and then I could put incentives rather than base salary, and I, I really just don't understand. No, because y'all have to realize though that this is a big part of gaming, really. Yes, I view it. I I I view it from I want to play the game. That's how I view it. You know what I'm saying? And and all and all for me is uh, let's make my team better to win next week against John down the street. That's and, and you know what I'm saying. I don't know anything about 2K's my league. Well, first of all, you should never have rules when playing Madden. Seriously, you should never have rules. If you have rules, like, we're just, honestly, like. Yeah, but how can you, just what I'm saying, like, how can you. I just don't understand the, like, I don't know, man. I just don't. It's not that I don't understand playing the computer. Because I used to play the computer. Before you could plug your shit in the internet, I would play like like NCAA like 04 or whatever. I would play the hell out of like Diamond or Dynasty. That, yo, that shit was awesome. Yo, on a side note, the NCAA on 360, I think, the online Dynasty in NCAA where you could recruit against your friends. Oh my God, dude absolutely cracked that shit was way better than cfm i ever played yo dynasty bro that yo we used to be cracked on that for one month oh my god dude dynasty and nca was awesome it has depth all right let's relax because y'all would complain about that too And, and and no, for real, Dynasty was tough. But see, I enjoy just playing like, and this is where y'all chasing, right? You got at some point, there's no end to to, to what y'all want. There's no end to the realism, you know. If you get like, there's no end until it's literally real. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like when I draw a picture, right? If I'm I, when I draw a picture, my goal is to make it look as real as possible, right? And that's what you guys want. You want, guys, want the best simulation of real life team building, right? 
For me, when I draw, it's never perfect. I could always keep working because you cannot make it perfect. You know what I'm saying? So your essential goal is that I want it a perfect simulation of real life. You know what I'm saying? And for me, you'll never get that. But you can get a good game to play your friends. I just don't, I, you know what I'm saying? All right, Celso, no doubt, man. I really just feel like the strive for realism could never end. I, I, I feel like the, the people that ask for, you know, I honestly aggravated aggravated Cardinals fan. I don't. I feel like CFM is pretty damn fun. I don't know. I really feel like it's it's fun. I really do. Now I could see if I was playing a computer and didn't have the competitive aspect of it, it might suck. But and this is where I, I challenge you guys, man. And, and I know all of us that are competitive are just kind of wired a little bit differently. But and it's hard for me to understand how everybody isn't wired like that. You know, it's like I wish I could open your eyes to how much fun being competitive in something is you know and i want to know why people shy away from that really yes exactly simulation will never exist it just will never be perfect yes pta sports i don't know if you're ever going to understand because you approach man from a standpoint of what happens on the field only yes Yes, like, Davey, please. I, I, I wish I, like, but it goes back to the point, like, I played a game to play against my friends, you know? You know? I used to play, yo, I used to love playing campaigns. Solo can I have no desire to play solo games, bro. All right, NFL has lawyers. It is, it is, Riggs, I tell you, it is completely two different worlds. But I feel like one of my, as I've, I've put in this spot, uh, is to kind of try my best to understand, like kind of unite everyone. And I feel like one of the problems that we both have is that we kind of turn our noses up to the other side of the, the gamers, right? And one of... And this is one of the problems with Madden's growth is that we are so separated, whereas most other games, they're they're not. They're, it's not this big as separations. Oh, I thought you said lawyers. <laughs> NFL has layers. I guess, man. But now you get into a point where, like, do we want the Madden game or do we want like NFL head coach? I love building my team, really. You know. Two K is terrible, bro. Man, man is better than two K. Uh, it just is. Two K is not good. What are you asking, Big Bird? You're basically re releasing mud every season. Yeah. I was thinking as I was taking a shower before the show and shaving my head. I hope you guys see it looks pretty good today. You see? can almost see, like, my reflection. But I was thinking, bro, I think they should give you 10% of your coins that you have this year for the next game. Like, if I have a million coins, I should start next year with 100K. Just, just, just a thought I'm throwing out there. That's all. A separate game? That's what, I mean, really. If you're not adding... Big Bird, I agree. I feel like they should, all, they should definitely add something at any chance they get. They should add something. I agree with that 1 million percent. I really do. Um... 
I never want EA to sell coins ever. I I, I like the the randomness of the packs. I like having to play to earn coins and everything. They definitely should add something, really. But I, I mean, it goes into what what is their mindset? You know, what is their thought process? I don't even know what they updated the Madden Twenty One update. You know, Gills. I mean, I. Some people do want to compete. Some people want to play CFM, bro. I want everybody. I want honestly. I want everybody to watch me. So I'm not. I laugh at you CFMers, but I want to understand. Like I, I want to get into the CFM world. Not that I want to get. I don't want to. I don't want to play the computer and worry about restricted free agents and stuff. But I, I'd like to appeal to the CFM people sometimes, man. I don't know, man. See. Andrew, CFM is a connected franchise where everybody is in a league and they represent one team in a league and they play seasons and playoffs and things like that. Yeah. Now, here's another question for you CFM guys, right? Now, obviously, CFM makes them zero microtransaction money, right? Mutt is the cash cow of EA, right? So... Naturally, they will put, they put, um, naturally, they'll put all their emphasis into what makes them the most money, which a business will, if whatever business you guys are in, uh, it completely makes sense. So it's tough to really blame them for that, right? And this is what I ask you, hardcore CFM guys what if they made parts of CFM, um, viable microtransactions within the CFM? Do you guys think it all, but along with that, this is what I'm saying. Along with that comes a lot more attention to detail, a lot more uh, focus from EA, you know, to folk because it's making them money now. Now it's just a side work. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Bird, that's what I'm asking. Like, say, okay, now you pay $5 to rename your stadium, you know, or something along those lines. Or, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. So it's like, is that something you guys think would help? Because then not only does it come with the added part of buying extra stuff, now they're adding, now they're focusing more on that feat or that particular portion of their game. Yeah. I don't know why people think 2K is so good. You know why? It's a, like, people just think the other side, like the grass is greener on the other side. You know, literally anybody could put out a football game and we would say it's better than Madden because it's the only thing we have, you know? It's like you've been hitting the same chick for, for how long Madden been out? 30 years. Of course, the, the next door neighbor, the, the cute girl next door, it, she looks a little bit better than the chick you've been hitting for 30 years, right? It's kind of just natural. You know? I see, Bird. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't know. Yeah, 2K is not too 2K is not good, bro. Seriously. Like, like seriously. I I honestly feel like I maybe I don't I, I, I like CFM. I felt like it was good. I felt like progressing my players was cool. I think uh with abilities, I feel like it shouldn't be random abilities. I feel like you should kind of have to like add points. Like, kind of get points. To, all right, escape artist is 5,000 points. You get five points a game, whatever it may be. So you move up, and you can you can actually, like, strive for that ability or something rather than a random ability. But we'll see. Yeah. Honestly, Pack Attack, it's actually crazy that Madden is $60 still. Madden should be 1 million percent free. Like, let's get over it, man. Like, for real, let's just... Every video game itself should be free. Because the best games in the world right now are free 1 million percent. Madden has signature throwing motions. Let's relax. And honestly, let, throwing motions aren't that much different than, than, than as jump shots are different. Come on, dude. You guys, uh, you know, like this is bodish. Clef, what's good, man? Yeah, Big Bird, I understand. I played a lot this year, for real. I really did. Yeah, but I really don't want to. I, I can't even do a wish list 
We're closing it on two hours on the show. I, I don't really want to add nothing to the wish list. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, yeah, A-Rod throws so much different than... that. He throws so much different than Andy Dalton. Compared to jump shots. Jump shots are way different. I do agree. They could have a lot more different things. But there's really not that much signature. I think more signature... I don't know, man. Nah, we're not doing wish list. We're not doing this. It's going to piss me off, bro. I've always wanted to talk to the guys that say cheese. And, like, I feel like the CFM guys are big. Like, oh, they just run cheese. That's why they win. I'll play a lot, Kunzi. Just for you, man. Pay $10 to unlock Mutt? I think the whole game should be free. We we pay enough, thousands and thousands of dollars. Let's be real. I don't think there's a person in this room, we're over 400 people in here that doesn't pay more. <laughs> like, the, the initial price of the game is like the least amount we'll pay all year, honestly. Ah, Big Bird, no doubt, man. The biggest thing is, man, at the end of the day, man is man. Daphne, yeah, I got you, bro. I will rate. How about this? You hit the sub, we'll raid J Hops 10 right now, bro. You just followed me, Daph. Matter of fact, give me a paragraph. Daffy, give me a paragraph on why we should raid J Hops 10. Give me a paragraph. You got two minutes to give me a paragraph on why we raid your cousin J Hops 10. Give me a paragraph. All right, you got two minutes. Listen, it better be compelling. The chat will give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down whether or not we raid J Hops 10. That's it. PTA, for sure, man. Anytime, reach out. I try to answer everybody that reaches out something, but. No, but I'm saying, but I'm saying long hair, but you you definitely over 60 bucks, though. Yeah. A own mutt card? Yeah, that'd be tough, bro. A, a customized mutt card would be tough. That would be awesome, man. Eddie Eyeballs is tough, for real, for real. Let's see. I'm waiting for this guy's paragraph. Like, where are we at right now? We are. We've been live for an hour and fifty-five minutes now. So at an hour and fifty-seven, if he doesn't put his paragraph on why we should read J Hops ten, then uh, we're not going to do it, man. No video games. No video games. Before we had to pay extra extra money afterwards, I had no problem with being sixty. I think PS PlayStation, the original one, they were like thirty bucks. You know what I'm saying, Chat? So it's like. Video games are, I don't want to say they're worth it. Now, I think custom uniforms would be ass. Uh, and I say that, Juice Man, is because, I mean, I've been playing a lot of MLB the last couple of months, and everybody's uniforms are ass. Like, it's not like nobody has good uniforms. Nobody has good uniforms. Father, we game every night, buddy. You know? Let's see, Daphne, where's, where's the paragraph, man? Daffy FN 69. Where's the paragraph, bro? Put it in the chat. Everybody is ready for your paragraph, man. Bro, you got 55 seconds. My cousin is grinding every day to get more viewers. It's his birthday today and he makes money flipping shoes. It would really make him happy. I would appreciate it. Uh how we feeling, chat? How are we feeling about my man Daffy's Daffy's paragraph? What's his da Daffy? Let me tell you, what's his Twitch? What's his Twitch? Put put his name in the chat, Daffy. What's his name? Let's check him out, boys. Els. I mean, I didn't really want to get off. I might host him and chill for an hour and get back home, but what's what's his bro? What's it? What Daffy? What's his what's his at, bro? J Hops 10. All right. J this is what happens on a new podcast, boys. Let's check it out though. We got we got to scout the scene, right? We can't just hop in there butt naked, right? I mean, pause, but maybe not pause. Let's see what we got here, boys. I mean, we don't get a face cam. Alright, let's see. If he makes one good play, chat. Chat. 
He's got the Seahawks. Ooh, spin move with a Koye. Okay, okay. How we feeling about this, chat? How we feeling? Talk to me. Oh, let's go back with this one. We need one good play out of J Hops 10, bro. He's setting audibles. Okay, okay. The formation he comes out in first play is going to say a lot. What does he go with here, boys? Okay, ace. He got A rod under. No ability on the quarterback. Okay. He got two streaks. Okay. I, li I like where he's going. I like where he's going. He's streak glitching. Ooh. Okay. 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 He got Waller and Calvin Johnson out there. Okay. Is he going for it again? Oh, one streak and one slant. Okay, two streaks. Okay. Oh, he's going double coverage. I mean, this guy. I mean, he's got to complete one. We got to complete one. Is he going back to this? Okay. Jay hops 10. He at least got to be on the mic. Is he on the mic? He got to be on the mic. If he's not on the mic, we're damn sure Complete not. Right. Oh, there he is. Oh, Dot? Okay. Is he going back to streaks? Oh, he going stretch? Okay, okay. Seven viewers. Seven viewers, okay. We're at 20 minutes since E. Davis followed me. No way. Felt like it was just... Why I juke? I'm terrible. Josh, talk. Am I not talking? All right, give me yeah, yay or nay, chat. Yay or nay, chat. Yay or nay. Yay or nay, man. No, 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 no. Cap, you can hear me. Yeah, okay. I'm watching I see a couple yays. Right I see Tell a couple right nays. I feel like we're 50-50 right. Right. right now. Yeah, just for that. Yeah, you lost your mod, Daffy. It's like, no. It's like, no. Give him a half hour. <laughs> Who else we got here, boys? I want to host one of these, Falcon. See if they <laughs> so maybe they'll host me one day. <laughs> maybe they'll host me one day. All right, who else is streaming, bro? Give me somebody that I actually know. See balling. J Hops 10, bro. I need a face cam for a stream. Oh, CFM, dude. Who's this guy? J Wade? Chill stream? Got a face cam? His stream looks pretty good, too. Hot Wheels? Okay, who's this? Hot Reed? Head to Head Seasons? Okay, Hot Reed. His stream looks pretty good. Let's see what he says. Let's see if you know who I am. What's up? What's up, buddy? This might be my guy right here. Chat, this was the new podcast, YouTube. This was the new podcast, episode 87. 